and we're live. Good morning, everybody. Can I just ask you all before we start to um, mute your mics and then uh, I'll ask you to unmute them as we speak. I've just got to read a few things out. Good morning. Welcome to the meeting of the Performance Management Scrutiny. I'm Claire Wilde, Chair of the Committee. I'm obliged to inform you that this meeting is being live streamed and recorded. Members of the public will be able to hear the audio of the meeting and view the papers shown on the screen. This meeting is being held using remote technology and should any committee member experience technical difficulties during the meeting, they should immediately contact the designated IT officer on the number they've already been supplied with. Everyone is requested to mute their microphones unless asked to speak. Please only use the chat function to indicate the desire to speak. Do not use it for anything else so that it's clear who's asking to speak and the debate has to be heard by those listening to the audio feed. As chair, I will interpret the council's existing standing orders in light of the requirements of remote participation with advice from the monitoring officer prior to making a ruling. At the start of the meeting, I will ask members of the committee to confirm their presence and any disclosable pecuniary interest they have in any of the items on the agenda. I will ask everyone that speaks during the meeting, including members of the committee and officers, to introduce themselves each time they speak. This is so that those listening know who's speaking. I'll now turn to the items on the agenda. Um, apologies. Uh, can I ask the committee officer, Julie Files, to confirm if there's any um, apologies or substitutions? Yes, thank you, Claire. We've received apologies from Hannah Fraser and David Vasmar is attending as substitute. OK, thank you. So I'm now going to do a roll call and disclosable pecuniary interests. So members are reminded to disclose any pecuniary interest in any matter to be discussed, which is not included in the register of interests and leave the meeting prior to the matter being discussed. I'm now going to read out each member's name. So I'm here and I have no uh, pecuniary interest in any items <laughs> on the agenda. Joy Sparrow. Uh, I'm here and I have no pecuniary interest. Thank you. Thank you. Karen Calder. Present and no disclosable pecuniary interest. Thank you. Uh, Roger Evans. Present. Nothing to no 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 declarable interest. Thank you, David Vasma. Uh, present and no interest to declare. Thank you, Alan Mosley. Present and nothing to declare. Thank you, Cecilia. Present and no uh, pecuniary interest to declare. Thank you, Thank you. Peggy. Peggy. Here and nothing to declare. Thank you. That was Peggy Mullock. Uh, next, uh, Dave Tremellin. No, OK, let me go to Leslie Winwood next. Sorry, my mic didn't unmute then. Yes, no, nothing to declare. Right, and that was Dave Tremellin. Sorry, if I now go to Leslie Winwood, are you here, Les? No, OK, if you um, if you enter the meeting later on, then we'll ask you the question then. I can't actually see you on the list. Thank you. Item number three is uh, the minutes and the minutes will be deferred to the next meeting of the committee. Uh, item number four is public questions and there's been no public questions received. Item number five is members questions. So Roger, if you could um, read out your question, please. Uh, 
Hello, Roger. Can you unmute your mic, please, Roger? Morning, Chairman. Thanks, thanks, Claire. My my apologies, uh, Roger Evans. Can I just stop you a sec there, Roger? Sorry, was that um, was that um, Les, Les Yeah, uh, are you here? I'm having trouble getting on. I've just managed it. <laughs> right, and have you got any interests? Uh, no interests. Right, thank you. Sorry, Roger. Okay, Roger, if you'd like to carry on. Okay, thank you, Chairman. My name is Roger Evans, Shropshire Councillor for the London Division. My question is. I am disappointed with the Highways Improvement Plan update. The report being considered today fails to give many details on what the actual improvements actually are. In the opening paragraph, it is stated that the service is being completely restructured to meet its vision. The vision, which appears in the report today, says to deliver a high quality highway service with our residents and communities at the heart of everything we do. Close, bra close brackets. In the last few days, roads have been closed with no notice being given to residents. Bus services cancelled because of this closure. Persons manning the barriers not knowing what the alternative diversion route was, so no advice could be given to those who suddenly arrived and found their route blocked. The times of the road closure were also altered with no prior notice being given as work progressed. Many residents and communities do not agree that a high quality service is being delivered. One, how and why was this work not communicated to the local member and the many residents who <coughs> would be affected by it? Why was it so urgent that no prior notice was given? Is this what is meant by putting residents and communities at the heart of everything we do? Two, many members query the structure that was introduced just 18 months ago. Requests for detail and contact numbers were refused. Will details of this new structure be circulated to members? Thank you. OK, thank you, Roger. So I'm going to read out the response. This isn't my personal response. This is a response from the uh, relevant officers. Under the Highways Act 1980, we have a statutory duty to maintain the highway network. In exercising these responsibilities, we will almost inevitably come into conflict with the travelling public and other stakeholders as we deliver meaningful betterment on the highway network, often at very short notice. At the same time, we have taken a robust approach with our contractor, Kia, in terms of holding them to account for their contractual responsibilities. Under the contract, Kia own the responsibility for consulting with stakeholders on work they deliver on our behalf. This function has, until very recently, remained with Shropshire Council. The firm a line drawn by ourselves holding the contractor to account has contributed to some of the issues around notification as our contractor adjusts to their responsibilities. We recognise these shortcomings and apologise for any inconvenience caused. Details of the new highway structure will be circulated to members once finalised. OK, so that's the, that's the answer I have. The next question is from Councillor David Vazma. Would you like to read out your question, David? Claire, can yeah. I have a supplementary, please? Uh, yes, of course you can, Roger. Oh, uh, sorry, it's Councillor Roger Evans for the supplementary. I note the reply and yes, uh, there is a duty to carry out the road repairs. But 14 days notice was notice was the norm and surely this should still be complied with. Uh, can I also add that the uh, people manning the uh, stop signs which stops drivers entering the roads which are closed. Most of them have no idea of the local area, have no idea of the diversionary route and unable to help at all. Please, please, can this be uh, sorted out so that people do know what is happening, where the diversions go, and we do need more notice. 
Thank you. Thank you. Uh, who's going to answer that question? Would you like me to say something, Claire? Uh, oh, well, hold on a minute, because I don't know who gave the initial re response. Was it um, was that Alan Morgan or Mark Barrow? Uh, Chair, it's Mark Barrow, um, Executive Director of Place. Um, the, the, the response came from Alan Morgan. I'm happy to talk to it, though, if you want me to. Or... OK, would you like to reply to the supplementary question then, please, Mark? Yeah, uh, so I think at the, at the end of the uh, answer, the, the statement was we recognise the shortcomings and apologise for inconvenience. I think, Chair, um, what I'll do is pick up the particular cases that Councillor Evans has just highlighted. If there's anything that needs to be picked up and addressed from that, I'll, I assure him we will follow it through. Um, one of the things that is really important to the whole improvement programme we're going to talk about later is our interface with the public and, and the communications with the public. So uh, it is something that's important to us um, and obviously we want to minimise inconvenience as far as possible. Thank you, Chair. OK, so, OK, thank you, Mark. Um, I, I think to be quite honest, Roger, a lot of uh, what you want to ask will probably come out within the debate. Are you content with that, Roger? Yes, thank you, Chairman. It will it will come out later, but I needed something there in writing that I can show to residents about what Shropshire Council is planning to do in the future. So that was partly the reason for the question. Thank you. OK, thank you. So I now have a second. Uh, the second question is from Councillor David Vasma. Are you there, David? Yes, Chair, I'm here. Would you like to read out your question? Yes, I've got three. I had three questions submitted, actually. Is that the first question I submitted? Yeah, um, yeah, no, there's something actually, given. Yeah, there's three questions down here, David, so you can ask them all and I've got the answers. Yeah. Do you want to take one question, okay. one answer, or do you want to read out all three? Shall I read, read them out one at a time? OK, we'll do that then. You go one at a time, yeah. Great. Um, and there's reference to the highways improvement plan. Um, given that so many of the problems with the performance of highways centres around their management of the contract with Kia and previously Ringway, it's very disappointing that so much of the report makes no mention of Kia. One of the problems all councillors and members of the public have faced is highways failure to monitor repairs, which should be done on their computer programme called Confirm. In the past, we had all, we had, all had examples of repairs that have been done badly but there appeared to be no consequence for Kia. With regard to point 50 can, uh, on the highway improvement plan, can we be sure that all work undertaken by Kia is now effectively monitored and if not done properly, Kia are not paid? OK, thank you, David. So I'm going to take this part first. Again, this is the reply from the officers. The highway improvement plan identifies 57 separate actions to deliver crucial improvements within the highway services for residents of Shropshire. We have changed the way defects are identified, ordered and repaired, we, and also we have improved the timeline and quality of repairs and reduced costs. We have repaired approximately 12,000 potholes since the beginning of March, increased permanent repairs of potholes from 5% to 95% and uh, repaired adjacent defects. We have introduced new alternative innovative pothole repair methods and implemented our own find and fix lengthsman gangs, directly reducing costs by up to 90%. We have delivered low cost drainage interventions which have resolved long standing issues and would extend the life of our roads and prevent flooding issues. We have instigated a mixed local economy and reinstated ditching and uh, di uh, ditching clearance using local contractors, reducing future damage upon road surfaces. The front face of the surface service has now been transferred to the council's customer service centre and resident inquiries have reduced from over 1400 a week to um, have, have reduced from 1400 a week by approximately 90 percent. They haven't given me the figure, but uh, that's clearly a lot. The members portal has been launched and inquiries have reduced by approximately 80%. There's no specific figures there, perhaps we can get those later. 
A new highway customer engineer and liaison strategy has been launched and a highways customer panel is being established with SALC. We are developing a new suite of KPIs into our contract with Kia to incentivize high performance and hold them to account. In respect to item 50 on the improvement plan, all recommendations from the council's 2019 audit review of the contract management uh, of the contract management of the terms maintenance contract have been actioned and closed. Improved processes are now in place to address the recommendations from the report. It is proposed to take the report to the audit committee at its forthcoming September meeting. Uh, and can I just ask whoever, whoever is answering the question, if you could just, because unfortunately I only got the answers about three minutes ago, if you could just give us the number for the um, customer service centre residence inquiries, what they've been reduced down to, and also the members portal as well, because they don't give us the original figure. Thank you. So um, have you got a supplementary on that one, David? Yes, very. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Very quickly, um, I noticed in the, in the answer there was reference to a mixed local economy. Um, I wondered whether that was what th that indicates future thinking as far as um, uh, uh, getting uh, work done for, um, on highways. And secondly, on the, the new KPI, KPIs, which you mentioned, um, will we have, will the committee have um, reports about the, the, the performance of here uh, with these key, 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 new key, key KPIs in the future? Um, it would be useful, I think, for the committee to be kept aware of, 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 of developments. OK, so are you going to take the, the, uh, that question, Mark? Uh, yes, Chair. Um, so Mark Barrow, Executive Director of PLACE. Um, yes, we've been working, uh, we're going to overlap Chair, aren't we, with the report here, but um, yes, we've been working with Kia to put in place uh, new key performance indicators. The intention is to create a dashboard of those that will roll forward and be vis visible to uh, all members. And of course, the other thing is that through the portal, each of our members will be able to see performance in their own areas as well. So I think that's that's fundamental uh, too in terms of uh, that locality um, management. In terms of um, Kia and the contracts and how we manage that and, and the reassurance is that the measures that we put in place have really strengthened our hand uh, and put us in a much better position to uh, manage the performance of, of Kia. Um, I think we were open when we talked to um, Scrutiny back in November that we were looking at more of what we could call a mixed economy. Uh, and part of the improvement story that we've got here in relation to uh, what's happened since relates to um, the use of different contractors as well as Kia, as well as uh, we've been directly managing uh, a group of uh, people ourselves through a, a kind of Lensman type scheme. So um, that's given us the degree of flexibility that we need to make sure that we can deliver in across the county uh, on the priorities that, that each of the jobs required have really re required. So hopefully that uh, that answers that chair, but we can perhaps expand on that fully in, in the next item. Yeah, and if you, uh, Mark, if you could just give me the numbers for those two questions I asked as well. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, we'll, we'll give you those. OK, David, would you like to ask your second question? Yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, under Action Point 51 in the Highways Improvement Plan, the report states the highways have been reviewing ways in which they can obtain the best from Kia. The result decision required is to review any resource changes. What was reviewed and were any changes made? Under update, we are under update, we are all told there have been more meetings with Kia and improvement teams set up with a new governance framework. But surely the obvious thing to do is review the operation of the very detailed contract with Kia and not pay for defective work. OK, thank you, David. So the answer I've got from the officers here says a new government framework has been introduced to the highways service to improve management of the highways and environmental term maintenance contract with Kia. The framework consists of a new strategic board, which is chaired by the new council's new assistant director for infrastructure, Steve Brown. An operations board, which is chaired by the council's new head of highways, Alan Morgan, and a number of individual services and task and finish groups, which will drive forward improvements within the contract. The improvement team is the first task and finish group to be initiated and has focused on driving improvements in reactive maintenance repairs. Further task and finish groups are currently being set up 
and others will be established as needed. Do you have a supplementary, David? Yes, uh, uh, just one point. It would be useful, I think, to have reports from those tasks and finish groups that have been set up in the uh, future meetings of this committee or the place um, committee as well. Yeah, I agree with that. Thank you. So would you now like to ask your third question, David? Um, yes. Do we have the specialist staff to monitor the contracts with Keir and uh, WSP? Right, OK. And the answer I have been given is a restructure of the highway service is being implemented to enable the highway's vision to be delivered and performance further improved. This has been developed with input from both staff and team leader forums and will be centred around three groups commissioning, operations and business management. New critical posts have been identified and job descriptions for all the management posts have been created, evaluated and graded by HR colleagues. Following the Council's policies and procedures, appointments to these new roles will shortly be get being undertaken. New team structures are being developed and new roles created. There will also need to be evaluated and graded following which appointments to the new staff roles can be made. Uh, do you have a supplementary, David? No, I don't on, on that particular one. That's, thank, thanks very much for that reply. OK, thank you. So um, let's just see members' questions. So at this point, I'm going to um, ask that we take agenda item seven, um, uh, take the highways improvement plan as it, agenda item seven. Um, so as such, I'm going to ask Mark Barrow to introduce this item and present it. Are you OK with that, Mark? Yes, thank you, Chair. Um, so my name is Mark Barrow. I'm the executive director of a place. Um, this whole topic has been a subject of, of scrutiny <laughs> for uh, some time now. So just to quickly give you the context, uh, Chair, in terms of the journey that we've been on. Um, uh, we had a, 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 I think, a really important place scrutiny um, meeting on 7th of November last year, where we really kind of started to focus on improvement. And as you know, audit, uh, all, audit committee also picked up um, some improvement measures. Um, the summary of all of that was there were three three main areas of focus for us. One was in relation to our contract with Kia, how we could better manage that, how we could ensure the quality uh, that that we. Um, uh, needed in terms of the repairs and the work that they do. Uh, our own services and the journey that they're on in terms of uh, improvements in our own processes and our own governance uh, to make sure we're managing the contract and managing our resources as well as we can. And then the third theme was really about the better and more efficient <coughs> use of resources. Um, and when we went to scrutiny in November, um, a lot of effort had been done actually to reduce a backlog of a highway related maintenance from at that time about three and a half thousand to about 700. Uh, however, um, uh, performance then it worsened again uh, over the winter period. And when we got into spring this year, we decided we needed a full and inclusive program of improvement because what we were encountering weren't one off issues. It, they were more systematic problems. Um, so that's why we brought in uh, Tom Blackburn Mays as a consultant. And it's also why we engaged an organisation called Proving Solutions who are an offshoot of Cranfield University and they work with local authorities across the country to do some benchmarking and a best value kind of review exercise. All of that has fed into the Highways uh, Improvement Plan that you see at Appendix A. Um, and you'll see um, members will know that there was a report to uh, Cabinet in, in a restricted one this week in relation to our proposals for new performance indicators uh, with Kia. So uh, there's been a lot of work to kind of particularly focus uh, on on that improvement in in Kia related performance. Uh, you'll see in the report chair also that uh, we've called out how the quality of those repairs have now improved. And at one point we were having really far too many temporary repairs and now all of those, this is perhaps a reassurance back to David uh, Vasmir in terms of quality, uh, all repairs are now done on a permanent uh, basis. 
So around that, we've created a new performance management framework that includes the portal. It includes, you know, working towards a dashboard for you as members to just keep in touch with how this service is input performing at any point in time. Um, and then there's a whole kind of new layer of officer governance uh, around this too. And the cabinet member uh, supports uh, this process as well. So we're all aligned in that sense. Uh, I'm delighted that we've got Steve Smith joining us as a new assistant director mm. on the 20th of July. Uh, Steve comes with a strong track record of delivering high performing services uh, in this area. So um, in other words, I think, you know, that whole strengthening of, of management in this area is a really important thing for us. Um, and also call out to members that Alan Morgan has been appointed to uh, the head of Highways Post permanently. Um, congratulate Alan on that. Um, and uh, that should be formalised within the next few days. In terms of the improvement plan, there is only one of those 55 items which were behind on progress, and that's to do with the LED street lighting uh, programme. And that's actually about understanding the column replacement programme mm -hmm. that goes alongside uh, the LEDs. Uh, there are seven ambers, most of which relate to some form of wider, more complex corporate process. Um, 23 are, are, are blue and completed and 24 are on target. So the progress uh, that we've been making is really strong, uh, I'd suggest, Chair. And to be fair to uh, colleagues in Kia, they've been very um, supportive in terms of uh, following this journey uh, with us. Um, of course, um, for this year, um, the highway service has been under pressure. Uh, ever since Storm Kira on the 8th of February and the flooding that it brought. So in terms of the performance and the, uh, the, uh, the, the improvements on the highway network since, uh, I think all testament to the team uh, and, and our contractors for what they've done to just get out and improve the highway network. And that's fo followed through, I think, in terms of the figures you've just heard, Chair, in terms of um, the drop in customer uh, requests, the drop in complaints uh, and the improvements that we're all seeing as we start to get out and about across the county. I think some specific call outs are also important in terms of the cost of those works. Uh, there's been a, a, an incredible focus by the team uh, and Alan Morgan's been part of that in terms of really getting value for money out of the way we commission these works. And in some cases now we're, we're paying a quarter of what we were paying just through being better organised ourselves. Uh, so uh, I think really good um, in that sense. This is a positive picture, Chair. Um, there is a journey uh, still to, to go and there is still uh, much for us to do. Um, Clearly, we're now focused on using uh, the best of the resources that we've um, been given from government. And members will also know we, we've been allocated 11.7 million as part of the government programme for uh, highways improvements. Uh, and to add to that, Chair, we're also um, now beginning to spend some of the community infrastructure levy uh, funding on uh, related highway and road safety improvements. Uh, I have Alan Morgan uh, with me uh, also on this uh, call, Chair. So if we need any items of detail, Alan, can uh, also add that as well. OK, thank you. Thank you, Mark. Um, yes, and I will ask Alan some questions. Um, I'm glad that you said we're on a journey because clearly I think things probably have improved. However, we've still got a long way to go. And the first point really I want to ask about is obviously um, we're in the process of digital uh, transformation. You know, we've got the My Shropshire, all this kind of thing. I think the frustration that many members have got, including myself, is um, we've got My Shropshire, we report things on it. Uh, if they don't like it, they just kick it out. There's no trace of it. Um, if they do like it, eventually it does get done. However, there's a lot of other projects, including the uh, drainage works, and in fact, um, the the I've been very impressed with the drainage engineer that I've met. I think he's doing a good job. I think it, it's of it's of good value, but it's the whole communication thing. So, what what I'd I'd like to see us moving towards is actually that members. Uh, I know there's a map on the members portal where we can actually see where jobs have been logged to be done, but actually that's only part of the picture. You know, I, I'd like to see everything that I've logged down on a list somewhere, not just deleted if they don't like it. I'd also like to see, um, um, you know, I mean, one of the issues in the past was how the uh, how the teams of workers were actually controlled 
I understand now you've actually um, got a hold of that and you actually understand what they're doing the following week and where they'll be. But I'd like more information really for the members so that if there's a particular um, thing happening, then I'd like some information about it. And I just think um, that there's a lot more we can do within digital transformation and within IT to actually give members a much better picture. And I think if members had a much better picture, it would reduce the number of calls that or the number of phone calls they'd like to make, which is a point Roger made, because if there's a place we can go and we can actually see, then, you know, that that gives us some reassurance that our concerns are actually being taken on board and being dealt with. And I just want to ask Alan, um, have you, I understand from Alan that that he's actually um, being able to forward program what the gangs are doing instead of them sitting around doing nothing. Have you actually got anything you can show us, Alan? Yeah, good, good morning, everybody. I'm uh, Alan Morgan. I am the head of highways for Shropshire Council. Uh, I've listened to everything that you said, uh, Claire. We, one of the, it's quite a complicated picture um, and it is a journey. We've got an awful lot right now within the service. I think your criticism that those improvements aren't easy to access or understand by members. I, I think that's I think that's legitimate. Uh, to be fair, some of these improvements are still at a trial stage and it wouldn't necessarily be fair to give members access to that. Well, because because it, it's not embedded and we're not certain that's the you know future of the future of the service. One of the things I focus on is, you know, being certain that the contractor is committed to this contract. Because one of the things that I never attempted to measure, but I sensed was a lack of real commitment. So one of the ways that I like to see that translated mm -hmm. is into plans. If you're committed to me, what were you doing last week? to deliver great service this week. I absolutely have to have that. And, and prior to me becoming involved in it, and Tom and, 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 and others, this planning didn't occur. So f on a Friday in week one, I get a full picture of where every single gang is going to be in the following week. And that is monitored daily. I've got sophisticated technology that enables me to look at those um, things, but every gang, every gang type, and I don't just mean broad brush, I can show you the names of the individuals and where they are working. In addition to that, then, we have data not produced by Kia, although Kia produce data, we use our own systems within Confirm to produce performance information that gives me the number of defects, the square meters of defects, where those defects are located, how many of those defects have been resolved in any given week, the size and cost of that repair. And in addition to that, we've got our own resources now on, on site and we have a constant running comparison in cost in terms of, in effect, what it costs for care to deliver it under the contract arrangements that we have and how we managed um, to resolve it. One of the big issues for us, of course, have been defects. But what has fed the defect problem has been you know, a, a, an, an inadequate approach towards drainage, which has had a consequential effect on the, the network. So those things have been the operational um, priorities. Now, what I what I have listed with uh, Tim is a couple of examples of the information that I've just talked to you about. They're particular weeks this week, um, and but I can show you weeks, indeed months, of this performance information and how we've moved from one position to another. So what you're seeing on your screen now. is 
the location of everybody who's working on this contract today. Now, technology won't allow me to show you this on screen because of the different systems, but this is exactly how it is. Not just that, what's really important about this is that last Friday, they gave me a commitment that this would occur, and today, this is it being actualized, which I think is a, a really important step. It's not just a reflection of, you know, these are the gangs that have turned up. This is where we've sent the gangs. You know, we we are dictating where the work is being carried out. You'll see the the map on screen shows you our uh, 16 zones, and they'll be working inside those uh, inside those zones. Uh, 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 over the period in a in a given period of time rather than working inefficiently going from you know one ward to another ward just to deal with particular uh, priorities it's very effective would you put another example up for me please if there is one okay so this is a that is an exact reflection of the plan that you've seen. So this is what I would receive on a on a Friday. And that tells me every single location behind that is further information, gang names, all of the, the details associated with it. And these colours directly correspond to where these ch chaps are working. And it's not just looking at um, high waste defects. It's also looking at uh, street scene, the various schemes, patching, surface dressing, <coughs> drainage works, etc. That's the complete picture for Kia. And that's not something that's been magicked up today for the purposes of this exercise. You know, I, when I received this um, information on <coughs> Friday, I shared it and I've weeks and weeks of of this. And this is being sensitized to the information that we're receiving from, you know, councillors, priorities and various uh, other things. So we are operationally, we are bossing this space. Kia are not stumbling into a particular location because it suits them or because it's convenient. We are setting the agenda and they are populating that agenda with operational um, actions. OK, thank you, Alan. And um, this issue actually came up because I had complaints about um, gangs in Harley where I was having some work done actually sat playing on their phones for two hours. So I'm really glad that that you've got on top of that. Now, um, I know David Vasmer asked to speak before Cecilia, but because you've had two questions, can I take Cecilia first, please? Thank you very much, Chair. This is Councillor Cecilia Mockley from the Corfdale Division in the south of the county um, and an area which I fear has um, taken a very long time for the highways improvements to get to. Um, uh, there are, I am obviously I'm delighted to see that that improvements are being made at this at pace at the moment. But I think what really worries me is the fact that that the state of the highways was allowed to deteriorate and particularly in my case, the, the, the country lanes, which as you probably all know, have to bear a lot of heavy traffic in the form of agricultural vehicles. Um, and the state of some of those lanes in the rural areas has been utterly, utterly diabolical. Um, the parish councils were reporting and reporting and reporting. They were using the portal to do so. Um, and the frustration over the last three years, I have to say, has been awful. Um, and what I don't understand is when it became evident that Keir was failing to deliver um, and failing to deliver big style, why on earth did this improvement plan not start kicking in much sooner than it did? Um, that, that's, that's one point. The, the, other, the other thing I would like to say is that I entirely endorse what Alan Morgan has said in terms of the uh, long-standing damage to our roads caused by um, drainage issues, and this is particularly a case in my division. But again, the programme that was supposed to deliver clearance of drains and gullies and culverts was just completely abandoned and ignored over years. 
And what really annoys me about this is the fact that as a result of that, we're probably having to spend an awful lot more money in order to rectify situations which would not have arisen had that perfectly basic maintenance work been done in the first place. So I would really want to know why was not, no action taken to, uh, to, 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 to try and get better performance out of Kia right from the start. Um, and second of all, when it was obvious that, that, that uh, they were failing and obviously not very interested in delivering as far as I can make out. Um, and equally, why did we just switch off on all ordinary remediation work, which could have saved us so much trouble uh, further down the line? So I'd like some answers to that, please. OK, thank you. Uh, so if I can split that into two two parts, really, I think. Mark, could you answer the first part, please, about why it took so long to get together to get this improvement um, plan going? Yeah, certainly, Chair. Um, so Mark Barrow, Executive Director of Place Shropshire Council. Um, so the contract started with Keir in April 2018, um, I think from what I've uh, that was before my time at the council but um, I also gather from members the frustrations go before that as well actually in terms of previous performance so um, I think there was this hope wasn't there that with the arrival of a new contractor the um, all the difficulties and problems from the previous contract would be solved uh, and that didn't come to pass um, and there's a range of reasons for that. I think partly the mechanisms weren't in place to manage the contract, uh, the contractor effectively, to manage their work effectively, to create programmes effectively. Um, and what we all kind of saw as original problems that stemmed from beast from the east at that time, that confused things actually. Uh, yeah. And it wasn't until we got into the latter half of 2018, we started to see some of the patterns and the systematic failures that were going on uh, within the service. So uh, I think that's just a, a straightforward hands up in that sense in terms of process. Um, and then in terms of the programme that we put in place, um, hopefully we've now got control of all of those kind of key areas as, as a reassurance to Cecilia. I think there's a headline level though bit, which is the model that we use to allocate resources. Uh, what, against a backdrop where about three quarters of our highway network is sea roads and unclassified, clearly in the rural areas. Um, about three quarters of our money though was going on A and B roads because of prioritisations around road safety. Uh, and to be fair to Alan uh, and colleagues, they've done a lot of work to get a better understanding of need in the rural area and, and um, Councillor Motley uh, correctly highlighted the damage that's done by the huge agricultural equipment in many of those areas. I think you know far outweighs uh, what traditionally is the model for investing in sea roads has allowed us to do and we've been much much clearer about um, getting a focus in those areas as well. Um, so uh, the additional uh, resource from government helped last year, uh, the additional resource this year will help again this year. Um, the report does highlight, Chair, that there's a process of asset management planning underway mm. and we're hoping to get a longer term five year plan in place um, pretty soon so that we can all be reassured that we're getting on top of the condition of the network as a whole. So I think that's a fundamental point, which is spending less money on reactive maintenance and more money on pre-planned preventative activity. OK, thank you, Mark. Alan, would you like to answer the second part of Cecilia's question, please? Yeah, I mean, the. Cecilia, I think the your criticisms of the network in the South are legitimate. I, I was really surprised about the condition of some of that space, some of the parishes in particular, like Nash, as an example, um, you know, had, had really suffered and you know, it, it took some essential uh, essential negotiating really inside the council to be able to produce uh, local contractors and get them into the space quickly to try and address the the problems there. But really, that's too that is too reactive. You know, for us, we should have a clear asset management in, plan in place to ensure that we understand all of these elements. There's a couple of parts playing a, a role in that. The first part is the software 
the software that we have um, doesn't contain all the information that we need to manage that space well. That's being uh, addressed as we speak. Mark identifies the five year plan, which is we're probably 40 to 50 percent through that five year plan, which will address many of the issues that you've um, raised, uh, Cecilia, and the, the focus on um, ensuring that in, in, in essence, if the asset could speak, what would it what would it say and what would it ask us to do? And we've got to be prepared to listen to that asset, in, including the individuals who represent that um, space. And I think we are doing a better job of doing that. I mean, we sent um, we, we've we've developed our own teams to deliver some of these local services. I sent a gang down into your space, Cecilia, in about April. I don't think I've seen them since. <laughs> the, vol the, vol the volume of work that they've been uh, c c completing and you know the size and scale of some of the problems there are really significant and some long-standing drainage um, issues you know I'm, I'm uh, you know and, and I've been down to that space with you Cecilia and, and, and I've looked around it and you know you haven't got to drive far to to, to see it you know and, uh, we will make a better job of that you know, I, I can't really explain why the South has suffered in the way that it has. Certainly the officers uh, down there are extremely committed. I do think it may have come down to resources or you know, the skills of the resources that were going in, 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 into that place. But I suppose there is one thing that I want to be clear on. I think it is the highway service that's responsible for getting these things right. You know, and we can talk to Kia and we can talk to WSP and we can bring them onto these calls. But ultimately, I believe the highway service is responsible and, you know, Kia and the WSP can't be excuses as to why we're not getting the right outcome. We need to drive that ourselves. And that is exactly what we're doing. And it's not just me saying that you've got a whole series of individuals who support me day to day you know, based here at the, the depot, but also procurement, finance, legal and uh, audit have played a key part in, in getting these changes in and getting these changes in um, really quickly. Does, does that offer you some reassurance, Cecilia? Um, Alan, thank you very much. That is very helpful. Just just a couple of, of points that I would I would like to make. The first is that it seems to me that um, when um, obviously our monitoring of what was going on was simply not good enough. Yeah. And therefore, we do need to have in place, as it were, some kind of early warning system so that you can tell when part of the system isn't isn't performing as it should be. And you can actually remediate that quickly. I think what the frustration that we all went through was the fact that not only was the work that we knew desperately needed doing not being done, but also we were receiving absolutely no feedback from anybody about what was going on and when it would be done. Mm. Um, I myself am not a huge fan, I'm afraid to say, of the Shropshire portal, just because I find it very inflexible to work with. And I also find it rather tiresome having to input every single uh, pothole uh, along a stretch of lanes, which is absolutely broken up by potholes. So I would just just log that, that actually I think we need to see if we can't help, uh, you know, um, help that a bit. The, the other the other thing that I do think is terribly important, particularly actually in my kind of area, in my kind of rural area, is the, the, this idea of using local contractors yeah. because they are very well versed in in you know the structure of the lanes and and what goes where and what is in a bad state um, and I, I i applaud you for actually breaking the mold a bit and using them and i would also suggest that quite a lot of the parishes have their own lengthsmen if the council have set up a system of using their own lengthsmen it would surely be sensible to to hook up with the lengthsmen that are also dealing with the parishes and just improve the whole knowledge of what's going on in a particular area. But otherwise, I'm grateful to you, Alan. Um, I did take you bouncing around the Corvedale in my um, in my car just before lockdown. Um, 
and uh, I think you did get a pretty good idea of what uh, of, of, of what I was complaining about. So I'm grateful to you for, for, for setting about tackling it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, OK, sorry. Sorry, Alan. Um, I'm just conscious we've got a lot of people who want to speak here. David, uh, thank you for being so patient. David Vasmore, would you like to ask your question now? Yes, uh, thank, thank you, Chair. Thank you very much. And just wanted to um, pick up on some of the points that have already been made. I, I very much praise the points that you made about the importance of communication um, and uh, giving members kind of feedback. I think it's very, very important. And uh, Cece, Councillor Cecilia Motley, I agree very much with her comments about um, about why, you know, concern about why these uh, problems weren't picked up earlier. And maybe you ought to have some sort of inquiry into, into what, what went wrong uh, during during that period um, when Keir initially uh, took over. Um, as far as um, uh, Alan Morgan's uh, comments concerned. I uh, welcome the improvements that have been made, and obviously, there, you know, judging by the improvement plan, there are there have been many improvements made. But one of the problems I think, um, which is still there, is monitoring of the work done. Uh, there was recently a report in the Shropshire Star about um, people complaining about work which had been repaired. Um, uh, and the, the, the residents described it as an dismal attempt, barely made a dent in the pothole. Um, and this is a report on July the 1st. Um, and the problem is, I would have thought that what you need is, is a proper system for photographic evidence to say that a repair has been done. In our in our meeting um, on the 6th of March, we did make reference to um, photographic evidence being required. And I wonder what, what, um, what progress has been made in actually using and having photographic evidence and that if, if you know work is not done we don't pay for it um, and that it's 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 going to we immediately have a follow-up to make sure that 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 work is done so I'd be interested in a response on that okay. um, next I'd like to say street there's some reference in the highways improvement plan to street lighting that's yeah. a red on uh, which is noted in the highways improvement plan yeah um, I'm, I'm very keen that we should have we should have um, uh, LED lighting. I think it's something we've campaigned for for many, many years, and I'm very pleased the council's now doing it. But I wonder what's going wrong here. Um, and I'd like there's not very much uh, detail in the report just to say what's going okay. on, other than you're looking at additional um, uh, issues. Um, also, that the um, you mentioned in the report about customer services. Um, and that there's there's quite a lot of issues saying that they are those services have been completed, that the improvements have been completed, but there's not much evidence of that. Um, so I'd be interested in in having some sort of um, uh, details on on that. The other thing is is that I, I don't know whether this is appropriate for this particular committee, but the nature of the Keir contract is a contract which. Um, in which Keir come forward with um, ideas of how and what things should be done by taking a much more direct um, route, as obviously everybody wants, um, then I think that it's possible that if uh, that we could get ourselves into financial problems as far as the, the Keir um, uh, contract is con concerned. And I'd be interested in report, uh, comments on that, but maybe that's maybe that's a subject we can um, discuss in an exempt an exempt uh, uh, period. Thanks. Thanks, Claire. Thank you. OK, thank you. Mark, would you like to take those questions? Um, I'm especially interested about street lighting. Mark. Uh, yeah, I'll kick off for the very high level, but Alan's got the detail chair, so I'll let Alan. Oh, OK, uh, well, Alan, okay? do you want to do that then? Abs uh, absolutely, yeah. So in terms of photographs, um, the all the direct labour teams all the individuals that we're employing delivering services ourselves. They all use the confirm system. Every single task they carry out <laughs> is photographed before and after every single job is raised. There's absolute transparency in terms of the data, the impact on the asset alongside notes. As far as Kira are concerned, I gave uh, an absolute deadline of the 1st of April 2020 for uh, photographs to be available for us for every activity. That has now happened. We've had a full file of all historical information linked to confirm numbers and we get all our uh, uh, up, updates on a on a daily basis using an FTP site. I'm not particularly technical 
uh, David, but the, the, the technology works and this has been verified by our colleagues in um, audit. It was part of the original audit recommendations. The pictures themselves are very helpful for small scale work, but they're not really indicative of larger spend areas. So they're very, they're very effective for that, for that small stuff. In terms of the street lighting LED, um, David, um, I saw the proposal. It's been approved, uh, but we yeah. We, we felt that we might have been been nudged into a particular corner in respect of the LED, and I felt certain elements of it were overbaked. So as a result, um, we started to talk to other authorities that had delivered this themselves to try and get a clearer picture Ooh. on, um, uh, you know, an alternative perspective, not necessarily not delivering it, but uh, but either delivering it differently or, or specifying it differently to enable a more competitive uh, offer. This has flushed out a series of assumptions and issues with the original report and WSP are revisiting that original report and I await the outcome of that. Like you, David, I'm very, very keen to see this mm. LED um, spend to save initiative installed. Uh, there's been a, a, a big focus on the save and insufficient focus on the spend and I've 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 I've, I've restored that and uh, I'm absolutely satisfied this program will go ahead it, and, and in fact I'm I'm keen that Kia deliver it because they've been very good in the area of uh, street lighting of course are delivering our maintenance which will make it uh, efficient, but I think the specification needed um, a revisit and we're 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 on the way with that. I, I'd hope to have that done by the end of June, but I haven't had it back yet. I've been told I may get it by end of play tomorrow, which would be really, really useful in terms of um, customer services. Many of the initiatives that we've got running at the moment, um, David, uh, our trial and so you know some of them we've tried and they've worked really well much better than we thought one or two of them haven't quite worked out for all sorts of reasons and they've been um, revised and we've spared uh, customer services some of those experimental journeys but once the planning is correct the five-year asset management plan is in I think you will see and the data is being captured correctly by all services that we operate through including the agricultural contractors we've even taught them to use the carbon tech drainage asset management system they're logging direction of flow all the ditches all the work that they've uh, completed and ultimately all this data in the right hands certainly not me but in the right hands will give a real picture not just on the day but in advance about what we're up to and eventually may even be uh, costs associated with that and live streams. Certainly at a departmental level here today, I can tell you the cost of every de defect as it's as it's delivered at the end of every single day. Just wider, your wider point about Kia, there's nothing that we've carried out here that we think is going to give rise to any sort of claim or any sort of cost. We've done a detailed analysis of what the potential impact might be, and I believe we're in really safe territory. In fact, many of these initiatives are being led by having crucial conversations with Kia and almost going through a right sourcing exercise when we say, look, you're really good at this really big stuff. You can get tarmac cheaper than we can buy it. You know, you deliver the big works. Perhaps we'll look at a smaller set of arrangements, you know, a smaller mixed economy of delivery options in the smaller, more flexible um, areas. Right now that that is the direction of travel and operationally it's working re really well and, and from a cost perspective we haven't reached out to anyone. You know we've 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 taken all of this change and delivered all this difference within the existing cost um, um, envelope. There's been no hands up for additional money. Okay so Alan just um 
just summarising that really, I mean, I think it's really important when you're doing all this, you know, we're talking about uh, gullies and drainage yes. and everything else. It's really important that we keep proper records. Historically, Absolutely. the council had proper records, you know, and this is part of the thing, you know, we've got to understand what we've done and understand how we can do it better going forward. So, I, I, sorry, this, the chat's moved up and down, but my list says, I've got Joyce, then Alan, Alan Mosley, then Dave Tremellan, then Steve Davenport, then Roger. So I hope you, I've got you all in the right order. So Joyce, would you like to ask your question next? Yes, please. Thank you, Chair. Uh, Thank Councillor you for Joyce, being patient. It's OK. Councillor Joyce Barrow. I understand complaints to highways have worsened and it's because of a lack of response from highways to initial complaints. I think this creates a false sense that the council is inefficient. Can this be addressed? Is there anything planned to deal with this particular issue? I very much welcome the report and the changes that have and are being made. Can I also ask how officers have adapted to these changes and whether this, this has impacted on staff morale? Thank you. Uh, well, you I, go, Alan. I'm, I'm happy to answer that. I mean, this, if I can answer your last question first, Joyce, getting the balance right and getting goodwill restored and a sense of pride in the service it's not a, it's not easy to, to it's not an easy position to get to and it's something that we've worked hard on you know right across the the, the service there there are individuals who've been disaffected for all kinds of uh, reasons you know some of them legitimate some of them less so and you know, my 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 own view is that goodwill has been restored. The way that this restructure exercise has been carried out has been, you know, highly consultative. You know, with with working groups regularly meeting, real discussions about um, the tasks and the future and the challenges, and um, but all of which supported by our colleagues in um, you know finance and HR so that people are not going out on a limb and making promises that <coughs> can't be delivered all of this is is aligned and I believe we've reached a point now where we've got a great structure and we've um, many of those senior positions have been through the organizational process in terms of uh, d d d d delivery I think What's really interesting is, you know, at, at the start of COVID, and I think it's a really good measure, at the start of COVID, when the directors gave a commitment that um, they wanted to see business as usual as far as possible, as an interim, I probably had two options really, dig in for three months <laughs> because I couldn't be going home every weekend, or, or or leave. I opted to stay, and many of many of the staff stayed with me, mm. and we've delivered really thousands and thousands of repairs during that COVID period, where other authorities have really struggled to mobilise their uh, c contractors and deliver their arrangements well. And, and I think that for me is the trophy because during that time they were all negotiating for their. Um, own, own future. For a mark, I think we're probably somewhere today, somewhere between seven and a half and eight out of ten, Joyce, would be my mark in terms of morale. So there's 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 plenty done, but more more to do. In terms of uh, communications, the structure that we had didn't facilitate that particularly well. That is amended in the revised structure. There's much more of a commitment uh, to that, but but I also sense that the improving goodwill amongst the teams will see better decisions made and um, better outcomes uh, delivered. OK, thank you. Um, Alan Mosley, unfortunately, has had to go to another meeting, so um, I've got Dave Tremellan next. Would you like to ask your question? Chairman, have you got me on the list? No, I haven't. Sorry, Les. I'll, 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 you can ask a question after after uh, Dave, if you like. Is that all okay. right? Fine, okay. that's fine. Thanks. All right. Thank you, Chair. Uh, Councillor Dave Tremellan for Hiley. Uh, 
Well, thank you, Steve, Mark and Alan. Um, Alan, just very briefly, still waiting for you to come back about that meeting you wanted to, in February with myself and Ella Preston. So I'd be uh, I'd be pleased to hear from you on that one. Um, but I'm actually very angry because given that there are stretches of road in Highley that are far worse than, than Station Road, which is down on, on this programme, um, would it be overly cynical to suggest that this programmed work on the road the local councillor happens to live in was a tactic to head off his intended Section 56 action. And thank God a certain private investigator didn't pick up on it, because otherwise I might find myself joining Joyce and Vince in the pages of Private Eye. Um, but the main thing too is, is I mean, I've just said that, that Station Road really, it's down for, for, for patching. But it, it, it actually it actually didn't need, there are stretches around here um, that are like a, I mean, minefield. I drove with my wife, I had to go to the Queen Elizabeth in Birmingham yesterday. And I mean, I drive a Ford Mondeo Estate, which is actually quite a quiet car and absorbs um, defects in the road. But my, we, went, we went there in my wife's uh, Kia Picanto, which is a relatively short base car. And it was it was like driving through a war zone that, that, that quite apart from the actual shocks, the noise that it, it would be a good idea if instead of sending your teams out, Alan, Mark or whoever, instead of sending your teams out to assess the local roads in an area, ask the ask the parish councils to do it and let them give you a list of what's a priority for them. I mean, and actually to go back to what we were talking about too, about local contractors, there's a, a perfectly good local contractor here who actually does work for Worcestershire County Council. And I've actually mentioned them to Shropshire Council and it's been, I've heard nothing back about that. But, oh dear, sorry. Um, that, yeah, no, that, sorry, Joyce, I'm, I'm winding myself up here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, well, I, I, Alan, that'll do for you to be going on with. Yeah, okay, and so. I just think the other thing is, Alan, and it's part of the question Dave Tremellan yeah. was asking. Historically, uh, we had to do the repairs on an asset management based approach, uh, which is why we have this problem whereby the roads that are really bad, because it's not their turn in this regime we have to follow to get grants, um, is not on the list. So if you could pick that up in your response as well, please, Alan. Thank you. Yes. So, um, f David, my apologies about not g getting to you about uh, a, a, a promised meeting back in February. I, w mm. I will. I will get put that. Um, I will put that right. Um, what I've got is I've got Andy Wild on the call, and um, I, I asked him to sit in if there were any specific issues around particular uh, locations. Would it would it be OK, Chair, for him to come in and answer? Yeah, with pleasure. Hello there. Good morning, everyone. Um, Andy Wild, I'm the on the operations manager for highways. So just just to sort of give a, a little bit of, sort of background in terms of um, how we prioritise and how we how we determine our how we're going to invest. So a, a couple of examples with regards to um, surface dressing. Now, what what it's not always clear is is why we choose these roads and how we how we de determine how we're going to invest money that 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 original sort of process is very much derived by asset data and condition data and the department for transport stipulate that's a condition on us as a highway authority that that's the process that we follow now in terms of actually looking at how we invest that money there are roads we in the county where it would look from a layperson's perspective that it makes no sense that we're investing money there and not there. The bottom line is the way that we have to invest money, we have to, to, to start off on a preventative maintenance strategy. So we invest cheaply and efficiently early in the life cycle of a pavement. So we invest in patching and surface dressing, which typically costs about five pounds per meter square to address a link of road. Full resurfacing can cost north of £30 a square metre. That is why we, we've ended up in a situation where some of these roads have deteriorated to a point where the investment needed to pull those roads back up to a significant standard is extremely cost of, costly. 
and our budgets simply are not getting far enough down that list currently. So some of the measures that Alan has highlighted there in terms of how we're going to invest more efficiently and more strategically across the <coughs> network will give us a better chance of harnessing that asset. So I appreciate that from people's perspective when they're driving the network, it looks like we are investing on roads that do not warrant it in the same way that other links do. The bottom line is we have to invest in these roads that we consider to be green and amber to stop them getting red. We have to invest at five pound a square metre, otherwise everything ends up in the 25 and 30 pound a square metre bracket, which is incredibly punishing for us in terms of how our budgets are, are developed and how our budgets are spent. So I fully understand um, David's sort of view and, and, and the point that he's making. What we are trying to do is develop a strategy whereby we get our reactive maintenance to a point where it's cost effective for us. That will release more money into the strategic investment and that planned investment that's, that is key to getting our strategy right around the asset. And I fully accept that there are links of road that are, that are, are troublesome for all of us in terms of the, the perception of us. The, the perception of the travelling public and the ratepayers who cannot understand why, you know, we are not getting to some of these links of road. It's it's a it's a whole scale investment and a change of strategy around investing smartly, quickly at the right point, and that will give us the the headroom and then in our budgets to invest in other links of road that desperately require it. And the road the program that we're currently delivering across the county is now getting on the front foot with investing cheaply and quickly at the forefront before those assets deteriorate to a point where they're hugely punishing costly to, to actually um, bring those back up to a standard. Does that does that sort of explain that rationale? Yeah, yeah. Where we're I mean, I think to... I think where it falls down a bit, Andy, in my experience anyway, is uh, it's all very well having this asset management based approach. But if I give you an example, uh, I think it was Ringway did uh, resurface Shinton Road in Cressage. And they made an appalling job and missed all the drains and the road is in a terrible state. Uh, we never got them back to correct it. So, of course, they're going to have to wait however long, 20 years for something really properly to be done. And that's where you get it when when you don't have a consistent quality in the work. Yeah. So obviously, you know, you talk about the asset regime and every so many years but when you get a bad job, it throws the whole thing thing yeah I, so I, I think I think, um, I think it, what we are picking up here is what I describe as a, as a significant legacy issue specifically yeah. around drainage and and the underpinning of that yeah. drainage asset if that if that man if that isn't managed correctly through ditching through culvert clearing through effective gully emptying regime then the asset deteriorates at an accelerated rate and that's what we're finding all over the network links of road that have deteriorated beyond the point where we, we can we can re routinely maintain them and we've just got too many of those issues at the minute that we're trying to wrestle with um, but but by getting that drainage offer correct I think what we're going to do is give ourselves a better chance in future of maintaining these assets more eff effectively more efficiently and in with a cost model that makes sense to us and um, okay. and that's really where we're driving towards at the moment. Okay um, Dave are you okay because I have got quite a long list here but it's only, a, it's only a very, very short one, Joyce. OK. Um, and it, it's actually, uh, Alan and Mark, it's about um, damage done by contractors, housing housing developers. Um, we're not doing enough, really, to follow up on this. We've got a street here in Highley where the, the ridges from the contractor traffic are, are about three or four inches deep. Uh, <laughs> but but there's nothing, there is nothing there that Steve Brown could do because we didn't, we did, we had nothing in in writing. We had no agreement with the contractors to come back and put right the damage that they'd done. Nothing in writing. We had assurances. Ironically, the contractors actually held a public meeting, and I actually congratulated them for actually holding that public meeting, which is something that Taylor Wimpy hadn't done when they built the 58 houses on Jubilee Drive. I actually congratulated them, but the mess they've made, damaged drains, this damaged highway. Uh, but there's nothing we can do. There's nothing we can do about it because they've gone away and they simply deny. Before any contractor cut starts work, we need somebody out there taking photographs. We we need a before and after report. Yeah, yeah. And, and I think that's part of the thing that Alan's trying to do is be much more proactive in way in the way that yeah. they manage the highways. 
Uh, so may, I, may I make one final point? Yeah. Um, just to just to pick up the the, the other point that Councillor Tremell and uh, made there in terms of local civil contractors, that I believe the company is referring to a James Civils who are, who are based in Highley. They, they're a company that I know of. Um, I've had conversations with um, with Dave who um, as as early as I think it was last week. So the mixed economy is something that we are very very interested in. Um, we have procurement issues that we need to overcome and ways that we need to find ways of engaging these contractors, but they are they are constantly sort of coming up and, and constantly being reviewed and, and the offer that we think these contractors can provide. Um, and having a local contractor is something that appeals to us greatly and is part of the plan going forward. So I'd just like to make that point. Thank okay. you. I'll, I'll sleep easy. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Dave. Yeah, thank you very much, Andy. OK, so I'm anxious to get on. So Les Winwood, would you like to ask your question? Uh, thank you, Chairman. Um, j j just after my question and, and the answer, I will have to leave, I'm afraid. I do apologise. Okay. I've got to be somewhere else. Um, prior to, uh, by the way, the, I, I do think improvements are starting to be seen. Um, residents I talk to are starting to see action and, and, and at last. And I, I'm pleased to say and thank the staff very much for what they're doing. Um, but my question is, um, Prior to COVID, uh, Wenlock Road Bridge North, um, the road improvement scheme and a safety scheme uh, had a date for start and obviously was, was stopped because of COVID. Um, this has been going on about three years and I, fair enough, it, COVID has uh, messed it all up and it's not our staff's fault. But what troubles me is that this road safety scheme has been going on that long now to get to this point of start. And I had an email from uh, one of our site in, uh, engineers, uh, if you don't mind, I'll just fetch him up. I'll go. Um, it's, it's, it's a scheme um, from Westgate, goes up Tasley Bank to the cattle market in Bridge North. It's a highways improvement scheme. Um, and the, I'm, I'm sorry, I can't raise the officer's name, but they've been very helpful in keeping me posted. But what troubles me when I received the last email was that they're waiting for Kia to tell them when they're going to do it, not us telling Kia when we want it done. And that's what bothered me when I saw the email. In other words, are Kia telling us when, when these things are done? Bear in mind, it's about three years old. It's a safety scheme that had a date start date it's been stopped and now we can't get a date out of them. And it just bothered me when I saw that they're telling us, not us telling them, we want this done. Could could someone please, please come back to me? Tasley Parish Council are desperate to get this done. Um, it affects Bridge North West and Tasley. And as the member for Bridge North West and Tasley, I do find it totally frustrating having gone on for about three years. I won't go through the story of why uh, as, as to get to this stage, but it does need surely us for tell, to tell Kia, not Kia to tell us, and that's how it's worded. So could someone let me know, please? Okay. So Wenlock Road, Wenlock Road, Bridge North, Road Safety Scheme. Okay, Andy, uh, yeah. is Andy Wilde still here? Yeah, um, I'll, I will um, pick that up with the relevant too. officer, Claire. Yeah, I'll, okay, I'll reply to Councillor Winwood directly on that. Okay, Thank you very much. Your staff have been very helpful, keeping me informed, but as I say, that wording didn't didn't uh, inspire me at all. It doesn't inspire me either, so um, leave that with me. Thank you. OK, thank, fantastic. Thank you, Chairman. Okay. Thank you, Les. Right, OK, so uh, next we have Roger. Are you there, Roger? Yep, Unmute thank you. I was, well I, was, I was just unmuting myself. To come back to the report that we've got today. <laughs> yep. Going on to the paper report to start with and the improvement plan afterwards, at four in it, it says financial savings and cost implications are reported through the Highways Improvement Board. Who is that? What's involved? Why have we no information on this today? Because in the improvement plan, a lot of it under the finances, TBC, TBC, TBC. In other words, to be confirmed. Now, if we are a scrutiny and we're looking at the highways plan update, financial assessment, there is absolutely nothing in it at all, except it's reported through to the Highways Improvement Board. That was set up as part of the original complaints that I made and David Vasmer made to the Chief Executive last autumn. 
had no feedback from that improvement board, don't know what they're doing. Can something be said about it, please? I have more in a few minutes. In, and if, if it's wanted, the restructure, which was mentioned in earlier on, when are we going to be told, told what the structure is going to be, is B, because I see it's down for job evaluation in the highways improvement uh, plan and everything like this. So the structure is already in place, but there has been no consultation with any members. And that was what was problem the last time with the restructuring. Members were presented with it and it was unworkable. So can I start with that, please, Claire? Yes, you certainly can. What I'm going to do is I'm going to ask Alan to answer the first part of it. And then James Walton, I'll ask him to ask about the um, financial stuff, uh, because as part of all this, we want to uh, make sure that uh, the financial regulation and monitoring is actually improved. So I'll ask him that after Alan's answered your first bit. OK, Alan, did you, would you like to kick off? Yeah, yeah, happy to. So the Highways Improvement Board is is largely myself, Mark Barrow and Tom uh, Blackburn Mays. So we meet once every two weeks and we review um, progress. We anticipate that Steve Smith will join that group once um, once 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 he joins us in a in a, in a couple of weeks. OK, thank you, James. Would you like to answer the other question I just asked to follow on from Roger? Yeah, and certainly can you, can you just specify exactly what what you, you you're looking for me to answer there? Um, OK, just, yeah. <laughs> OK, <clears throat> so so we've been looking at the improvement plan for highways um, and as part of all this, what what's been said or I think has been said is actually um, Highways, along with actually improving the service, have actually improved the financial control so that it's easier for the finance department to understand where they've spent the money, on what, and give them some feedback about the costs. Whereas before, it was, was nothing like that. So I just want a bit of an update on you about the improvements you feel Highways have made and, and how much easier it is for you to understand what's going on. OK, I mean, ge generally in relation to that, it, it's about communication. Um, the information is held within uh, a number of different um, systems uh, and that can be pulled out at, at, at various times to, to provide the updates. And that information is, is what goes into uh, the, the, the monitoring reports and the reports that uh, that are produced um, each uh, each quarter and, and at the end of each financial year. The, 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 the change here and the impact is around that, that communication within that. So it's very clear in terms of the levels of commitment, uh, early sight in terms of where things uh, are not going to be progressed at the speed that they were initially uh, considered, uh, a clear understanding early on in terms of how things are classified between uh, revenue and capital and where they would fit around the uh, the, the geographical uh, locations around the county. So, and, and then added into that, obviously, um, we then have um, you know, announcements from government that then uh, in relation to additional funding that that um, that will come in for various um, uh, various aspects. So all of those things are a continually moving uh, feast. And while we can record all that information and, and, and you know, pr produce uh, the uh, the reports on the back of it, what we need really is that close working with the, the contractor between the highways department and between the finance department to make sure that the, 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 there's a clear understanding of the messages that that, that, that is um, uh, that, that, that is actually sending out to the organisation and that allows then um, greater scrutiny.